Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome to the Raw Reflections podcast brought to you by the Mirror Impact. I am Arielle Keller, and today we are going to be talking about how to respond to limiting beliefs. All right, guys. So last week we talked a little bit about limiting beliefs or belief ceilings. And those are basically those those things that we believe in our minds that we have been told our whole lives or those things that we've come to believe based on situations or um, scenarios or maybe just personal uh, insecurities. And these are things that we are not required to hold on to. We basically, the limiting beliefs that we have are because we allow them to limit us. Um, We allow them to keep us from living our greatest, most fulfilling lives. So our goal for this week is to work on responding to those belief ceilings. The first step is to identify them, which we did last week. Um, If you were, if you did your your point of action, you wrote down all of your limiting beliefs and um, in the specific categories that I outlined. And um, we focused on just basically outlining those to get them out on paper because when you get them out on paper it it materializes them enough to where they feel a lot less overwhelming all right and that goes for pretty much everything in life stresses things that you fear all kinds of things and we'll dive into those in different weeks but for this week we are going to be focusing on how to respond to these belief ceilings or these limiting beliefs in three specific categories. And these are the three categories that we break down everything with the mirror coaching model. This is our three responses. Obviously, there are going to be different responses um, sometimes, but these are three key ones that I feel that a lot of responses kind of filter into. Um, So our first response, we're just going to jump right in. Our first response to limiting beliefs is our release. The second one is repair and the third one is overcome. All right. So we're going to start with that first one. Um, Remembering, and I want you to keep this in mind throughout this week when you're identifying these things and you're learning how to process through them. I want to remind you that this is not a destination of perfection, but a constant journey to greater self-awareness and personal freedom. All right. So keep that in your mind. You are working towards your greatest self. You are own personal freedom and your beliefs and what you think about yourself and what you love about yourself and that is the goal for this week all right it is not meant to be oh i have to fix this one time and then i'm good to go it is a constant reconnection and that's why i purposefully bring up new topics in my program each week because and each month because we deal with different things throughout our lives and there we can't just fix it one time and you're good to go it's got to be this constant element of reflection and an introceptive awareness and growing in that so that you can become that person that you dream to be all right so excuse me i got a tickle in my throat first step to response our response number one is release so A couple of things I want to touch on in this element is that releasing requires us to allow things to like allow ourselves to let things go. And like I touched on last week, this can sometimes be difficult because it establishes that understanding that we were wrong or that we were mistaken in the first place. And that is not what I want you to focus on. That's not, a, that's not what this is about. It's not about an ego thing because that's pretty much what our fear of taking action because we were wrong, that's what it's based in is, is an ego thing. So <clears throat> our goal for this release is to focus on what is within our power to release. That is releasing things that no longer serve our greatest good that no longer serve the the truths that we believe or that no longer serve um the expectations that uh we i mean maybe they no longer serve us because they are expectations that someone else has placed on us that we no longer want to carry around we no longer feel the need to carry around all right so That's the first one is outside expectations, learning to release other people's expectations of us. Um, For example, I had a friend in high school and she was like, she was like the top notch academic. Like she graduated with high school with a bachelor's degree. Like she was insane. She was crazy, 
smart. She was beautiful. She was so sweet. Um, but she struggled a lot because her parents had such high expectations for her in her academics and her success in um, where she was going in life. And that took a toll on her, um, you know, right around that post-graduation area. And, and I was able to be there for her in that um, season of her life. But it, she confided in me in the in the sense that this was something that she was put under a lot of pressure because of the expectations of her parents and her parents didn't mean any harm by it they just wanted her to be successful and to be driven and to make something of her lives because they they came from very little and they wanted they worked really hard for what they had <clears throat> they wanted it to be easier for her by getting an education and by you know getting all the the things the du her ducks in a row to where she could be successful but in her mind that wasn't what she truly wanted and, and now thank god she's doing exactly what she wants to do and she's happy and she's where she wants to be and um and moving forward in what she what the expectations that she has set because she was able to release those expectations of her parents and i feel that we we see that a lot in different areas of not only children and parents setting expectations on their children, but also trainers setting expectations on their clients or um, maybe your colleagues setting expectations on you or your friends setting expectations that or having an expectation that you are always going to be the person that they can drop all of their crap on and you will fix their problem or you'll tell them how to fix their problem and that can be a huge burden for a lot of people so there are a couple of things with with those expectations i want you to kind of acknowledge and identify and maybe write a couple of notes down on that um, because it may be something that you are holding on to expectations that other people have placed on you that you are allowing yourself to hold on to, but you don't need to. And the only thing that you need to do is set boundaries, have conversations. And sometimes that's difficult for people because that's confrontation. Um, and no, not everybody is comfortable with confrontation, but it is important to be able to speak our mind and be able to speak the truth and, and be able to, to, walk through life without having the burdens of other people's expectations laying on us because that is our choice to allow them to burden us it is not anybody else's choice they can people can throw stuff on you all day long but until you say i am not going to hold on to this i am not going to be the person that you just dump all your crap on then you are allowing this to happen. So keep that in mind and keep in mind the boundaries that you may need to set in order to release some of these. And we're going to, um, that also ties into to overcoming, which we're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, and then releasing the uh, the connections and influences. And that's what I mean in a little bit, um, in a little a sense in sometimes you have to release some of those relationships or friendships in order to move forward in your life and I know that I have had to do that with friends and it's not been easy um, sometimes it's easier when you move to another state I will say that but um, it doesn't go away if you are running away from something and moving to another state and you have this constant mindset that other people can set expectations for you and expect you to do certain things for them and you don't want to, then you need to stand up and say that. You need to stand up for yourself um, and understand what your expectations are for yourself um, and what expectations you've placed on yourself that are unrealistic as well. It's not just the expectations from other people. It is also the ones that you've placed on yourself, the ones that you have um, maybe taken a responsibility for something and you didn't need to take that responsibility. It was too much for your life right now or it was too much for your commitment level right now and you need to, to back it up a little bit and set those boundaries for yourself and your own expectations when it comes to weight loss, when it comes to um, eating, when it comes to, I know a big thing I deal with is people who are saying, oh, I don't want to start losing weight because I can't do, I can't be all in right now. And I'm like, Okay, this is honestly, that's the biggest cop out that I've ever heard in my life. I can't lose weight. I can't start my journey now because I'm not all in. And that's, they, they want to be in this place of, oh, I'm changing, 
before they even start, they make the commitment to start changing. And that's what drives me crazy is this, the lack of willingness to change. And this is why I'm so specific with the people that I work with, especially one-on-one, because there's a lot of people that will do the workouts and they, you know, they kind of half-ass their way through the rest of the stuff. And it's difficult to deal with people like that because I'm, I'm wanting to help them, but they don't want to help themselves. They're so focused on everything being perfect. They have to have this level of perfection, this level of, oh, I have my nutrition on point. I have my workouts on point. I have my sleep on point, my stress levels. Keep in mind, I don't have all that crap together. Not every day. I'm still a work in progress. There are days, honestly, today was one of them, and I have not eaten anything but carbs because I felt nauseous all day. And I had to listen to my body. Even though I'm not eating a whole lot of carbs on a regular basis, that's what my body needed today. And in if I had set that expectation of, oh, I have failed today because I didn't follow exactly what I wanted to, it's releasing that expectation of perfection in order to achieve success. And that's what I want you to focus on when it comes to expectations of yourself, all right? So that is release. Repair. I took a little bit longer on that than I expected. Sorry about that. (laughs) Repair is our next step. So repairing, these are repairing the limiting beliefs that we um, have perceived of ourselves. So for example, limiting belief of, oh, I'm big boned. I uh, have depression. I'm never going to be happy. Um, I, I can't eat or I, uh, I eat bad because I have depression and that's the only thing that makes me feel better. Um, these are limiting beliefs that are, you're allowing them to restrict you. And by repairing these perceptions or repairing these understandings of what you are dealing with and how that influences your weight loss or your goals, repairing that perception okay so for me a big one was my and i shared this in my workout wednesday today um video so if you want to look on facebook for that um but the the biggest thing that i had a difficult time repairing my perception of was that i mean i grew up and my i had stomach aches every day i had eczema covering half of my body because i was dairy and gluten and and like sensitive and i would eat a grilled cheese and a salad or a quesadilla and a salad every day for lunch because I was allowed to make my own lunch and that's what I liked. But, and in that day and age, my parents, they did what they could to feed us. But a lot of times it was a, if you're still hungry, grab a piece of bread with butter. Like that, that was, I mean, it was, it wasn't that we were able to um, have all this high-end organic food at that point in our financial you know, ability at the time. My parents did a really good job at feeding us with, with the, you know, what they had, but I didn't have any idea and my parents didn't have any idea about my sensitivities. So I developed this belief that I was always going to be fat. I was never going to lose weight because no matter what I tried, I still had the gut inflammation and it wasn't allowing my body to lose weight because it was in havoc mode. It was in high stress mode. My cortisol levels were out of whack. So it was setting off my hormone levels. And this is at a 15 year old level, like 15, 13, um, 10, all the way up, you know, and it was something that I struggled with and I became, I became burdened and almost paralyzed by those realizations of I'm never going to figure out what it is that I'm allergic to. I'm never going to figure out what it is that's causing me to feel bloated and disgusting all the time. And that was translating to my mental state as well and spiking up those, your gut directly, um, is directly connected to the nerves in your brain as what or the nerves in your gut are connected directly to your brain so if you are having gut inflammation it can affect your um your cortisol levels and it can also affect your um oxytocin levels as well which is that happy hormone it can decrease the dopamine and cause those spikes in depression and anxiety and that is why i am so passionate about that mind body and gut connection because it is all connected and it affects all areas of your life regardless of whether you have one area on point and the rest are off or if you're constantly in that state of working towards 
bettering each area of your life. And that's what I focus on. That's what I have focused on. And that is how I broke through my limiting belief of, or beliefs of thinking that I was always going to be fat. I was always going to be big boned. I was never going to be able to wear the clothes shamed for the quote unquote voluptuous body that I had because of the religious restrictions on, you know, clothing and those kinds of things, modesty. Um, and I felt I grew a lot of insecurities because of my body. Even though I've learned to love my body, it took a lot of time. And it was because I learned to repair that perception of myself and who I could be, what I could achieve and how I was able to, and like I said in my video earlier, I am, I believe that I have been granted these struggles so that I can help other people through them later on. And I've, felt, I've seen that come to fruition. I've seen the effects of me being able to help other people because I've dealt with that same pain. I've dealt with that same frustration of being in a fetal position for the majority of your day because you don't know what you ate. It is a, it's, it sucks. It really does. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about and you have dealt with this, I resonate with you, okay? I completely understand where you're coming from. But I need you to understand that the condition that you have, the diagnosis that the doctor gave you does not have to limit your own understanding of who you are, what you're capable of. The only person who can limit that is you. The only person, the only thing, situation, anything is your belief of that diagnosis or, or your acceptance of that as reality rather than continuing to, okay, yes, I have this, but I am going to use this as another reason why I want to improve in this other area or another reason why I want to help. Mine was my passion increased for the people that I wanted to help because of the gut issues I was dealing with. So tap into why it is that you may be struggling with this and try and repair that perception of that rather than an oh poor me mentality, repairing that perception of how is this something that could eventually benefit my life or the lives of others, all right? And also I challenge you when you're in those moments of complete, like those low moments of depression, of frustration, of fear, of anxiety, of high stress, Think about how you can serve someone else. Think about how you can bless someone else. Even if that's a text message to your best friend saying, you are beautiful, I'm thinking about you today, love you, whatever it is, you could be a light in somebody else's life and I guarantee it's going to make your situation feel a lot less overwhelming if you choose to shift your focus, repair that perception of life in general and how sucky it feels right now and be able to serve or bless someone else, you're going to be surprised. So I challenge you to try that. Um, all right, our last one is overcome. I'm going to try to finish this up so y'all can get back to your days. Um, overcome, These are. this is basically our last step because it's the step that's left. The things that we can't repair or the things that we can't release, we either repair or overcome. And the things that we can't repair, we just have to overcome. And that is when community comes into play. That is when your team, your tribe of people who are also focusing on those similar um, those similar goals, those similar um, steps forward in their lives as you make steps forward in your life. And that sense of community that you are not alone. You're not the only one dealing with gut issues. You're not the only one dealing with depression or anxiety or um, allergies or breathing problems or um, any sort of hypo or hyper uh, thyroid issues, hormonal issues. You're not the only one. And sometimes that understanding is what makes or breaks your level of success. Because once you have decided one of those is the truth, it's very hard to shift that. And those over that this, this point of overcoming is going to be in the sense of what are you choosing to believe and what is it that you're going to have to work at? Identifying the difference between those and putting in the work 
you are putting in the work right now by listening to this podcast. You're putting in the work each week when you do your 15 minutes for your point of action. 15 minutes a week is not that big of a deal, guys. I do that on purpose so that you can be successful and you can still be challenged because that constant state of increasing your self-awareness in different areas of your life is how you're going to move forward. When we stop learning, that is when we start dying. I fully believe that. And when we are learning about ourselves and what it is that's in our minds and what we believe about ourselves, that can translate to not just you and the way that you live your life, but also outwardly to your family, to your friends, to the people that look up to you, the people that respect you. Um, And it can be a huge transition for not just you, but you can create that impact in the world around you just by becoming more aware yourself. And that is the power in in this whole system of, of continually becoming more aware in different areas of your life. And another thing I want to touch on with your overcome, um, your point of action, or sorry, response number three, overcome, is the shared beliefs that you may have grown up with, the shared beliefs um, that your family still has or your friends still have maybe about you and the success that you're going to be able to to make. Um, I know it's extremely difficult when all of your influences are unhealthy and you're trying to be healthy. When people are bringing home chocolate cake and it's really hard for you to resist it. Or when somebody's like, oh, well, I'm going to get a late night snack and then tries to get you to eat it with you or you know those just making it a little bit more difficult for you and those are elements of that you need to overcome those aren't things that are just going to go away sure you can ask somebody to walk into the other room and eat their nachos but you could but you also can develop that mindset of oh this is my goal this is what i'm trying to do so i'm going to choose to overcome this in this moment but by by being able to identify that issue and how you have to respond to it, you've already established power in the situation and taken your power back in that. So keep that in mind when you're making difficult decisions or when you're dealing with people who don't have the same shared beliefs as you when it comes to health or, um, or, you know, healthy relationships, healthy food, healthy, um, expectations and boundaries when somebody doesn't understand your religious beliefs or doesn't resonate with your truths um, that you've come to understand as an adult Um, or maybe it's just overcoming and, and starting to challenge some of those beliefs that you've grown up with that you never felt settled right but you never had the opportunity or the need to challenge those beliefs and maybe it's come time to where you need to challenge some of those beliefs. You need to challenge some of those truths that people have told you about who you are and what you are meant to become and learn to overcome those with surrounded by people who care deeply about you, genuinely care about you and your well-being. So I want to challenge you in that today. Um, Just to recap, it's these three responses are releasing what we can't release, we either repair or overcome. And when we can't repair something, we have to overcome it. And I hope that you guys can um, find some encouragement in this podcast this week and uh, that you will identify, if you haven't already identified some of those limiting beliefs and and then figuring out how you will respond to those. And um, one way I would love to challenge you this week is to grab a piece of paper and a pen. Um, Maybe you've already written down some of those limiting beliefs. And then I want you to grab three different colors of markers and go through each of your responses in a different color and circle or highlight those, um, those limiting beliefs that you need to release, repair, and overcome. And focus on one of those Um, at a time not overwhelming yourself with all of these different things that you need to accomplish but focus on the one that you feel if you release it or you repair it or overcome it that you feel you would you would notice the most release or that um that burden lifted 
that would make the biggest difference in your life if it was no longer there. So keep that in your mind when you're going to challenge yourself this week. Um, it does not take very much time, maybe 10 minutes out of your day um, once a week. Easy peasy, just a way to keep your mind working as well as your body. So I hope you guys have an amazing week. Again, my name is Arielle Keller. This has been the Raw Reflections podcast brought to you by The Mirror Impact. Um, Be blessed, create the change, be the impact this week, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.